seen your mom fed cooking show. Welcome back to the Junior and Senior Mumford Cooking Show. So, this is episode two. This week we'll be making the legendary Cheetza. We've made Cheetza with students at the Burgate School for many years. Mr. Mumford, with the Cheetza, why do we call it a Cheetza? Basically, the Cheetza is uh, it's a pizza, but you're cheating. Okay. But simply. The cheating bit, as far as I remember, is that in these troubled times, it's very difficult to find yeast. What do we use instead of yeast, Mr. Mumford? Well, we actually use baking powder, which sort of creates a chemical reaction in the wheat and helps it rise. Fantastic. So, we can't find any yeast. You probably can't either. So this week, it's going to be cheetza. Okay, so first part of the cheetza recipe that we are going to demonstrate is going to be the pizza dough. And this is what you want to make first. Mr. Mumford, what ingredients do we need for all the cheats done? Okay, so first you have the dry ingredients, the flour, the baking powder and the salt. Okay. And uh, you want to bring all those together, add some water, add some oil, and there you go, Bob's your uncle. Fantastic. Simple, easy and an effective way to make a cheetza. So here we are about to demonstrate how to make the cheetza dough for your very own cheetza recipe. So, Mr. Mumford, what goes in first? First is flour. Flour. How much flour do we need? We're going to go for a cup's worth. So a you cup's can, worth. You can use any sort of standard cup, mm -hmm. um, a small cup, not like a ginormous mug, but uh, just a small. Your average size cup. Yeah. If you haven't had any of those cup measures, they are very useful. We have a cup measure, but it's only a half cup measure. So we're going to use two half cups to make the full cup. Over to you, Mr. Monfrey. Make sure your cup's nice and full. It's quite messy stuff, flour, so uh, do be careful. Beautiful. What's next? Uh, it's a uh, teaspoon of the baking powder. Teaspoon of the baking powder. Now remember, the baking powder is your magic ingredient, which is really replacing your yeast allowing your cheetah dough to rise a little, not as much as with yeast, but enough to make a decent airy pizza. I would like to add at this point as well that we are kind of basically making self-raising flour here. So really, if you have any self-raising flour at home, please feel free to use this and omit the baking powder. Good tip, Mr. Mumford. Next, it looks like Mr. Mumford's going for the salt. We are using Himalayan rock salt. That's why it's that slight pinky colour. Small teaspoon here though, so I'm doing a couple. We have ultra small teaspoons, don't we? So, we need a little bit more. Just stepping out of short here to grab a spoon. Now, it would appear Mr. Mumford is, is stirring the dry ingredients together. Yep, definitely stirring the dry ingredients together. To ensure even distribution. Once we've stirred our dry ingredients, what, what would we be going for next? What, what, what goes into our, uh, into our pizza dough? Essentially, we want to make a little well in the middle here. There is the well. Yep, I can see the well. Next is going in is the, uh, the water and the oil. We're going to put in a tablespoon of oil. Tablespoon of oil. Olive oil if you've got it, but if you haven't got olive oil, any old oil that's knocking around. Beautiful. Now you will notice that Mr. Mumford here, Junior, is adding the water very slowly. It can be a disastrous situation if you add too much flour too quickly. You'll end up with a batter-like mixture that is really only useful for the bin. It shouldn't really resemble pancake mixture, it should be a nice firm dough. Add that water ever so slowly. How's that going, Mr. Murphy? Well, the dough seems to be coming together quite nicely. I think that's nearly ready to grab a hold of and handle. Fantastic. 
As you can see, the, the dough is almost cleaning that bowl for him, removing every last drop of flour. Makes things nice and easy when we come to the wash up stage. Very important, the wash up stage. Also, you will have noticed, just one last tip there, Mr. Mumford did not use his hands at all during that process because the dough would have been far too sticky. Flour's going on. Flour shakers are very handy at this point, but you can use a tablespoon of flour in a sieve if you wish. Good tip. Hands are going in. Flouring the hands is another good way to uh, prevent any mishaps. We don't like sticky flour in hands. No. Plenty of flour on the work surface. Keep a clear area, it's always nice. Tidy room, tidy mind, isn't that what they say? Absolutely, Senior. absolutely, Junior. Now, as you can see, Mr. Mumford, a professional in the kneading department, is kneading that dough. Now, there are some technical aspects to kneading, aren't there, Mr. Mumford, that you've, you've explained to me on many occasions. What, what's happening now to that dough as you're kneading it? Well, you see, you're actually, you're stretching the dough and the fibres are stretching and within the fibres are CO2 pockets. And you may have heard of this expression in science of stretchy polymers. I do love a stretchy polymer. I do oh, love yes. a stretchy polymer. Link here to science, which is always good. Beautiful. Every last bit of dough being used here. How long, how long should people be kneading that dough for? Junior. I'd say about five minutes would be preferable. Can one overdo the kneading process? Oh, they certainly can. Okay, okay, good tip. Don't over knead your dough. And what happens when you do over knead the dough is you end up with a very sort of tough dough. Okay. If that happens, start again. It's my best advice how to you. How can one tell that you've reached the optimum kneading sort of time limit? Well, it should be smooth, soft, it almost feels like skin, soft, like okay. soft skin. Yeah. And uh, smooth, stretchy. Stretchy as well, elastic. You'll notice it kind of pings back a little bit. Okay. Like that. It's yep. quite early in the kneading stage at the moment, but yep. there's yep. still a bit of ping. A little bit more kneading to go. So, I mean, looking at how you're kneading that dough there, I would estimate probably two, three minutes maybe on the That's right, yes. Yeah. Nothing more is needed. <laughs> Beautiful. One-handed kneading, very good. If you have small hands, obviously two hands can be deployed. And a good tip here, a little, uh, a little kind of uh, summary really of how to get a good dough is if it's too sticky, add more flour. If it's too dry, add more water. Fantastic. But you're aiming for that soft, smooth, elastic. Those three words will. Uh, Set you on your way. Beautiful. Just shaping it into a nice ball now. You may have seen this uh, enacted in pizza houses or films. Gordon Ramsay's probably done it once or twice. Here we go. Oh, he's deployed the throwdown. Now, the throwdown, not necessary. And our apologies to everyone who now has a kitchen floor that's covered in flour but it can help to create extra air pockets in your dough, I believe, Mr. Mark. Is that correct? That is correct. Fantastic. So do you, do you think we're kind of approaching the, uh, the stage where we can actually roll this dough out? I think that's about right, yep. I'm just gonna clear the decks now. Some space is required at this point for that dough rolling. Well, Mr. Markford's uh, rolling the dough uh, with his um, roll here. I, I, I would mention that at this point you want to be considering what you're going to be cooking your pizza on. If you're going to be cooking your pizza on a square dish, uh, your normal flat tray that most of us have that you might bake anything in, then obviously don't make a really perfectly round pizza. It will just look silly. Try and match your, the shape of your dough to the shape of the dish that you're going to cook your pizza in. You can see here, as Mr. Mumford's rolling that dough, it's springing back, which you might think this is really annoying, but 
It's a really good sign that you've made a great dough. It's important to note here with the rolling that uh, you're going to need to roll evenly. A rookie mistake really with rolling is that uh, you put too much force in one area. But you need to create a nice, even, flat roll. Look at that. Wrists and forearms being deployed during the rolling process. Absolutely amazing. You might not want to try that aspect at home yourselves, unless you've done this a few times before. Oh, now what's happening here with the, with the fingertips, Mr. Martin? This fingertips is... can be deployed. Yeah, yeah. It's just helping to stretch the dough out further? Just helping to stretch it out further. I quite yeah. like it, it's got a tactile element to it. Beautiful. Regularly turning your dough over, always going to prevent sticking to the work surface. Beautiful. You can see now we're starting to get a decent sized piece of dough. Again, always remember, what are you going to cook this in? Because if you make it too big or too small, it's not going to fit the baking tray that you've, you've decided to, uh, to cook your pizza in. Now we personally recommend a thin crust for this recipe through uh, many, many sessions that, of practice. Is that primarily due to the type of dough we're using here, Jim? Well, it's, uh, it's not a yeasted one. Yeah. So uh, it won't rise the same way. It's a thick crust pizza. It's a deep dish, I believe they call it. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so we're really going for a thin, a thin kind of more crispy base to our pizza here. This is it to ensure that it's cooked all the way through and it's not too doughy. Beautiful. Do you think you're kind of almost there now, Mr. Martin? What do you think? I think we're there. I think we're there. Fantastic. Now, if, if you are a bit OCD, I'd recommend getting a tray at this point and uh, stretching to the corners. Good plan. Here comes the tray. The moment of truth. Now, let's see how that fits in there. Be careful to flour your tray first. Just Is a little bit. That's to prevent sticking, I imagine? Just to prevent sticking, yep. Yeah. Good call. I think that's pretty Look good. That. Now, I've got to say, Junior, that's a sign of a true professional. Depending on how OCD you are, uh, we don't mind things a little bit rustic around here, but you can use your fingertips to just kind of stretch it out to the corners if you should wish. It's not essential, but if you're uh, of that persuasion, then by all means. Fantastic. Okay, so I think we can safely say stage one of Cheetah complete, Mr. Mumford. Okay, so we now have our pizza dough ready to make our cheetahs. Next thing we need is a nice tomato base. Now, in these difficult times, tin tomatoes are a very rare commodity. So anything that you can find, um, a passata, um, a um, bolognese sauce, uh, I've had to buy those recently because no tin tomatoes, so I'll do just as well. Basically any kind of tomatoey substance that you can find is going to fit the bill for this one. Uh, so Mr. Mumford, what are we going to use for our tomato base this evening? Okay, so we've got the tomato passata. It's, uh, it's a very basic tomato passata. It's quite cheap, it's about 60p. It's good quality though, it's nice stuff. Not um, bad. Not bad. I have known certain individuals to use barbecue sauce. Barbecue iron, yes. Reggae sauce could be quite nice, but it's not traditional, it's not authentic. We're, we're making this fully traditional, but yes, I have heard of people using those uh, those substances. And if you want to do that kind of thing, it's your pizza, you do what you like with it. Okay, Mr. Mumford, let's show these people what we need to do for our, our uh, tomato base. Okay, so tomato's going in. Pour that in there. Beautiful. Herbs are going in there. I'd recommend about a teaspoon. We're using thyme. Mixed herbs is good, oregano, basil. Fresh basil will work, dried basil, any sort. Or we'll use a little bit less of the dried herbs to the fresh. If you're using dried herbs, they're much more pungent. A little half teaspoon of salt again. Quick grind of pepper. And 
do like a bit of pepper in our house, don't we? Personally, we do. We yeah. Do like yeah. You don't need to do this much pepper. We've got a lot of time for pepper. But we do like a lot of pepper. It's place. good for you, let's face it. It is. Yeah. Much better than you thought. I think I'll stop there. I'm not. feeling a little sneeze coming on, so I better. Yes. You know, yeah. mm, Sneezing in this day and age? Not good. No. Not good at all. Okay, so what do we do now? Well, we're going to give it a little spur. Stir. What's a spur? It's a stir. Not a spur. I've heard of a spur, but I think they're those things that cowboys have on there. Do not use a spur to stir no, your potatoes. Just, just a spoon. Regular spoons, not spurs. You can't feel spurred on though. That's uh, yes. that's allowed. Yeah, it's good to be spurred on. Well, that's starting to look nice. Reasonably thick. If you wanted to thicken this up, you probably could use um, a little tomato puree, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, kind of thicken it up if you wanted a thicker passata. Sun dried tomato puree will add a very nice flavour to this. Absolutely. Absolutely. A bit of garlic in there could be quite nice as well. Ooh. And uh, even paprika if you're. Um, that way inclined. The world is your oyster. Indeed. Isn't it? In terms of your uh, your tomato base. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so next we need to prepare our toppings for our pizza. Uh, we've got our passata ready. We have our pizza base ready. Everything ready for the cheese except for the toppings. So, Mr. Mumford, what are we going to be uh, chopping tonight? Okay, so we've got a nice mild chili pepper here. We'll be chopping that into little rings. That'll look quite nice. Don't worry about dicing it or anything like that. Beautiful. Just nice little rings. We're going to be chopping a red onion. Lovely. And uh, you could use spring onions if you want, or the old banana shallots. Nice. Um, and we're going to be doing crescents, half moons they're called as well for the red onion. Basically just slicing it. Fantastic. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see that in a few moments. Um, what else have you got to put on your pizza this evening? Okay, well? we've got sun dried tomatoes. They're always nice. I'd recommend putting these on about five minutes before your pizza is going to be cooked. Okay. Otherwise, right. a little bit of crispiness might occur. Okay, well, we certainly don't want that. Anything else going to be on the pizza tonight? Uh, we're going to have a little bit of spinach leaf again. That needs to go on towards the end. Okay. So cook the pizza for maybe 10 minutes first and then just throw those on for the last five minutes. That's right. Warm them through as it were. And we're going to have some cherry tomatoes here. They're, um, they're nice little speciality ones here. We've got orange ones, we've got yellow ones, we've got red ones. Gorgeous. And a nice bit of colour there. Eating the rainbow on your cheetah. Exactly. Fantastic. And is that a little bit of spinach there? Obviously the spinach is going to go on with the sun-dried tomatoes. That's it, yeah. Fantastic. Olives? Olives are going to go on. I'd recommend just halving the olives, which I'll, I'll show you. It's a relatively simple Beautiful. process. Let's go. Let's get chopping some. Let's go. Ready to build. So we'll start with the passata. I've got a ladle here. You don't want too much passata. You just want to kind of carefully cover it. If you can just see where I'm going here, I'm just swirling it all around. And you may notice with pizzas that the outer rim actually doesn't have any tomato base on it at all. It is a dry crust. So you want to ensure that you recreate this feeling with your pizza at home. And I imagine that's just gonna help towards building a nice little crispy crust around the edge. Exactly. Fantastic. And then next is the cheese. Again, just a, uh, just a humble sprinkling of cheese is fine. Slide your pizza face over there a little, Mr. Mumford, just to ensure that folks at home can see the true splendour 
of that picture as it's being built. Okay, so what's next? I'm going to start with the red onion because it's a nice base. It's good to sort of separate your red onion here so it cooks nicely. You can create little rings like this, but you may find some of the red onion is still raw. Even cooking on your pizza, always essential. What are we going for next, Mr. Muffin? I'm going to go for tomatoes. I've noticed you're placing those skin side down. Is that is that just by chance, or is that is there a is there a method to your madness? I have to think it actually looks a bit more pretty. It looks a bit more appealing. There's a bit more detail going on with your tomato there. It's something it's just better to look at for me. Beautiful. And so I'm just going to go with the seitan next. Little scattering. Again, separating your pieces. It's great to get a uh, variety of colours in your life, especially when it comes to food, because eating the rainbow is what is going to get you a nice supply of vitamins and minerals, which is exactly what we need. I'm just going to hold that up to the camera because uh, I hope you can see the beautiful colours that are going on in that pizza. Absolutely gorgeous. So. Um, would you put a little, a little sprinkling of uh, olive oil over the top of that just of to course. help it, help it crispen up? Oh yes. Olive oil's nice, but whatever you have at home. Fantastic. So, how long are we popping that in the oven for, Mr. Mother? Ten minutes to start with. Check after ten for a uh, nice crispy outer edge. What sort of temperature? Uh, I'd recommend 180 on a fan oven, 200 on a standard oven. And about gas mark five or six on a gas oven. Beautiful. Fantastic. Here we are with the pizza just about to come out of the oven. It's been there for about 15 minutes. Let's have a look, see how she's doing, Julia. Whip her out, let's have a look. Watch out for that steam. Be Stay careful well, as you remove your pizzas from the oven. Let's have a look, see how she's done. Oh, no, that looks perfect. Absolutely gorgeous. Well done. Excellent job, Julia. So, this is Mumford Junior and Mumford Senior signing out from episode two of the Junior and Senior Mumford Cooking Show. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Junior Senior Mumford Cooking Show.